Now we're back in section 7.2. We're graphing uh, polar equations. We've already done a little bit of this in the previous video. We're going to pick up where we left off and we're also going to mention about how we can use symmetry to help us with our graph. I've tried to show that with the previous example. Now with this particular one, the graph of r equals 1 plus 4th uh, the cosine of theta. I should check for symmetry now because my videos are too long. I'm kind of streamlining this a little bit. I do have symmetry to the polar axis. You can tell that by if you make the substitution. Since cosine is an even function, this is equal to the cosine of theta back to the original and I have symmetry with respect to the polar axis which kind of looks like our x-axis. You can also see that I have a whole table of values. Notice I used all the multiples of 30 and 45 or all the multiples of pi over 6 and pi over 4 up from 0 to including 2 pi. Notice how I get right back to the r value for these two because they're coterminal angles. Now to graph this, again, you want to graph this in such a way that you can use um, the orientation. So what I try to do is I try to graph them in the order as the angles increase in size and keep track of it that way. So now I get my piece of graph paper. Oh, big piece of graph paper right here. I'm going to cover up my graph. There we go. And keep that balanced, I hope. I start graphing these points. 5, 0. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 0, right here it is. 4.4 pi over 6. And again, these are approximations. If I plug pi over 6 into here, the cosine of pi over 6 is the square root 3 over 2. Okay, the square root 3 over 2 is about 0.866 times 4 plus 1. I'm, I'm rounding it off to 4.4. So this is going to be uh, pi over 6, which is in this direction. Positive r, so in the same direction. I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 4.4 would be about here. Then I have uh, pi over 4, 3.8. Pi over 4 is this way, 3.8. 1, 2, 3.8. I'm approximating it right there. Then I've got 1 and then pi over 2. Oh, wait a minute, I skipped one. I have 3 and pi over 3, so that's this direction. 1, 2, 3. So it looks like maybe another circle here. Let's see if I keep on going. And then I have 1 pi over 2 straight up. 1 would be right here. And then I have 2 pi over 3. That's this way, but notice that my r is negative. It's a negative 1. Really, I wouldn't have thought it would be a negative 1 here. I gotta, I'm going to do this one in my head. Maybe I've made, made a mistake here. 2 pi over 3. The cosine of 2 pi over 3 is cosine of 2 pi over 3 is negative one half, that'd be, yeah, that's a negative one, all right, so at two pi over three, negative one would go in this direction, so it'd be right here, so I'm coming around, still kind of looks like a circle so far, and then uh, three pi over four, but negative 1.8, three pi over four, that'd be this direction, 1.8, because of the negative, I go in this direction here, and then I have, um, 5 pi over 6, negative 2.4, 5 pi over 6, but I'm going negative, so 1, 2, 2.4, kind of almost like a spiral here. And then at pi, which would be in this direction here, pi, I would be in negative 3, so 1, 2, 3. Now, I know that doesn't look like much, but I do have symmetry to the polar axis. And I will tell you right now, this part that's below is going to flip above, and this part that's above is going to flip below. So it's going to look almost like a circle in a circle here, a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and graph the rest of the points. 7 pi over 6, and I'm at negative 2.4, so that would be 1, 2.4, and then I'm at uh, 5 pi over 4 is at negative 1.8, 5 pi over 4 is at negative 1.8, and then uh, 4 pi over 3 is at negative 1. 4 pi over 3 is at negative 1. Yeah, it's coming around like this. And then at uh, 3 pi over 2, I get uh, 1. At 3 pi over 2, 
Let's see, that'd be down here, I get, no, I, I've got that, let's see, I've got to find it again. 3 pi over 2, I'm at positive 1, and then I'm at 5 pi over 3, I'm at positive 3, 1, 2, 3, uh, 7 pi over 4, 3.8, 11 pi over 6, 4.4, and then back here at this point. So my graph went like this, and this is going to be kind of rough. That was the first half, and then the second half, you can see the reflection here in the polar axis. So as I mentioned, it looks like a little bit like a circle within a circle. It's not exactly what you have, but you get an idea of the sketch. Pretty neat. You won't believe how difficult this would be to write this equation in rectangular form, but in polar form, fairly simple. And there's the graph. All right, now I got to clear that off because I'm going to graph another one. And if I can find my rag that I used, oh, that's way over here. To clean this off. Okay, make sure you see it here. Okay. There we go. Let's move my graph paper over to here. Now, this next example, as you can see, there are a lot more points graphed, and you may be thinking, oh my gosh, he doubled the number of points that he graphed. Well, I did. And the reason I did that is because the argument is a multiple of theta. If the, ar if the uh, argument is a multiple of theta, we're going to have to try to, in this case, two times theta, we're going to have to pick angles so that when we multiply two times the angle, we get a multiple of pi over 6 and pi over 4. For example, you see, if I pick theta to be pi over 12, 2 times theta is pi over 6, and I can find the sine of pi over 6. So, I cut each one in half, and you'll notice that my thetas that I plug in go from 0 to 2 pi. My two thetas go from 0 to 4 pi because they're being doubled and I'm finding all the r values that go with. What a mess! And you can see it coming because you have your argument is a multiple of theta, multiple of the unknown, x, y, whatever it might be. So, kind of interested to see what this thing turns out to look like. So, here we go. I've got a lot of points to graph. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I am going to graph some, uh, graph some different colors because you'll see why in a second. I am going to use different colors as I graph this. You'll see why. So now I'm not graphing 0, 0 here. I'm graphing 0, 0 here. So this is my R and this is my, well actually this is my theta here. I should take that back. My two theta is to evaluate and find out what the R is, but I'm graphing 0, 0, 1.5, pi over 12, and so on. Now fortunately, pi over 12, that's there. So they have some of these multiples of uh, multiples of, that have a denominator of 12, multiples of 1 pi over 12. So we start off with 0, 0. Now what's the biggest my value gets here? It looks like it's 3. So I'm going to make this 3, I'm going to make this 2, and I'm going to make this 1 right here so that it's a big enough graph you can see what's going on. If I keep it all in here, it's going to be a mess, especially with that many points to graph. So let's think, uh, 0, 0, right there, pi over 12, 1.5, that would be right here. Uh, pi over 8, well, that'd be actually halfway here between 0 and pi over 4. It'd be halfway here. And it is 2.1. So here's 2.1 would be about here. So we're going from here to here to here. Now what's next? I've got uh, pi over 6 and 2.5. That's right here. Then I have pi over 3. No, no, I skipped something. Pi over 4 and 3. Pi over 4 and 3, right there it is. That was easy enough. And then uh, pi over 3 and 2.5. Pi over 3 and 2.5. Seems like a pattern maybe here. 
uh, 3 pi over 8, which would be halfway in between here, and that would be 2.1. So definitely looks like a pattern here. And let's see, uh, 5 pi over 12 and 1.5. 1.5 and then notice here at pi over 2 and back to 0 and what I have here it's kind of hard to tell and I've done these before so I kind of know that this one's coming is I have what looks like a little fan blade right there or, or part of a propeller or a leaf now I'm going to continue but I'm going to change colors here as I go from this on down to here, I'll do the green. So remember, I'm right here at uh, 0 and pi over 2. Now at 7 pi over 2, which would be this direction, I'm at a negative 1.5. So I go in the reverse, 1.5. So from here to here. And then I'm at 5 pi over 8. That's halfway in between. 5 pi over 8, that's negative 2.1. So here's negative 2 and negative 0.1, about here, I guess. And then at 2 pi over 3, I go in the opposite direction. I am at 2.5. See, that'd be right here. And then at uh, 3 pi over 4, that'd be in this direction because it's negative negative 3 and you see it coming looks like it's going to be another propeller uh, blade here uh, another leaf and so what's going to happen as I continue this 5 pi over 6 I'm at 2.5 again then halfway in between for uh, 7 pi over 8 I'm at two, negative 2.1 so in this direction negative 2.1 and then at 11 pi over 12, I'm at negative 1.5. So this way, 1.5. And then I get back to the pole again. Now, do you see what I have here? And I'm going to try to make it look halfway decent. And as I mentioned, it looks like another propeller, like maybe part of a ceiling fan or something here. So I'm going to continue this. That's why it took so many points to get an idea of my shape, because... I've done these before, and I can kind of see the patterns coming. You've not done them before. And I'm guessing you haven't done them before, so therefore, you're going to want all the points you can get. But again, I'm following the orientation as my angle theta gets bigger. So now at 13 pi over 12, I'm at 1.5. Now remember, I'm here at the pole, and then I'm at 1.5. That's right here. At 9 pi over 8, which would be halfway in between here, I am at 2.1. Let's see, 2.1, be about here. And then, now by the way, even if you figure, well, it's going to be another loop here, or maybe another loop here, don't freehand them. Plot the points. Get a halfway decent sketch out of this. Okay, don't just look at decimals or your calculator and say, oh, this is it, I'll just freehand it and copy what I'm seeing. I want to see the points graph. I want to see you going through these steps. 7 pi over 6, I'm at 2.5, so this was 2.5 is right here. 5 pi over 4, I am at 3. Then at 4 pi over, let's see, now hang on. Let's see, where am I at? There it is, 4 pi over 3, I'm at 2.5, so that's coming back this way. Looks like it's going to be another fan blade here. And then at uh, 11 power rate, 2.1. Then at 17 pi over 12, 1.5. And then back to R is 0, back to here. So again, I'll do my best not to mess it up too bad. I'm messing it up bad, badly. There we go. And it looks like if my pattern continues, I am going to have a four uh, leaf something or other, or a four bladed fan here. I'm right here now. I'll go to blue. 
and at 19 point or it's in 19 pi over 12 I'm at negative 1.5 so in the opposite direction 1 to 1.5 right there and then halfway in between 2.1 and then at 5 pi over 3 it's negative 2.5 at uh, 5 pi over, or excuse me, at 7 pi over 4, it is negative 3. And then at 11 pi over 6, it's back this way at a negative 2.5, so in this direction. Almost done, 3 to go. At 15 pi over 8, which would be, actually it would be right in this direction here, halfway in between. But my negative tells me to come back this way. And then at 23 pi over 12, right here, I go backward 1.5, and then I'm back to here. So let's see if I can not mess this up too bad. Okay. Now that looks like something you might be able to draw with a spirograph, if you know what a spirograph is. You do if you've read my lesson. Uh, and they don't have to be separate color, different colors. Uh, I mean, I guess you could make them different colors if you wanted to, but it's probably best just to do it all in pencil, please. All in pencil so you can see the graph. And this came about all these extra points because of the repeated, uh, the multiple of the angle theta there and the argument of the trig function. And this is actually called a four petal rose. Certain shapes have different names. And you may have already seen this if you looked at the lesson that's online or looked at my notes. But certain shapes have different names. And so what I did was, and, and it's in the book by the way, you can find this in the book. But I'm going to hold it up for you and I have no idea how good this is going to be. So I'll try to get it as close as I can here. And you can see the different shapes. You've got the circle, the cardioid, which comes from the Latin uh, car, uh, cardus, I think it is, which is heart. You've got a limason, I believe the C is an S sound, a limason, and you've got a one loop, you've got an inner loop, that was the one I had, uh, the, the graph before this uh, four petal rose. You've got the Archimedes spiral, you've got the roses, and you've even got one that looks a little bit like a propeller, that's, I think it's called a lemuscate, or a lemuscut, maybe, a lemuscut, as far as the pronunciation. And all this information you can find online or, you know, Google, you can text it. I don't expect you to have all this information memorized, but if they ask you to identify a graph, you can always look back in here to identify it. I doubt if I would hold you responsible for some of these uh, equations being the way they are, but... These are some of the more common graphs that you get. Just like we're used to graphing lines and parabolas and circles using rectangular coordinates. Uh, well, they graph uh, the four petal rows or the cardioid or the limousine uh, when they're using polar equations. So this is actually pretty new to you guys and you're going to get a better chance at understanding it if you take the time to create the tables and to plot the points. If you just look at decimals, that's a good check, but that's not the way to learn how to graph these things. Alright, so practice, practice, and practice.